At the start of the movie, two primitive men venture deep into the forest until they come across a magical tree with several glowing fruits on it. One of them becomes curious and takes a bite out of a fruit. Surprisingly, this causes an avalanche of changes, starting with a giant snake that lands at their feet. Then, they are taken to another civilization where humans have become much more modern. The man who ate the fruit earlier actually ends up seducing the beautiful queen of this kingdom. Following this, the movie flashes back to where it all started. We are taken to the biblical times of early civilizations where humankind is still very primitive. A group of hunters have ventured deep into the forest looking for food. They chase after a boar, and when the lead hunter Marlak gets ready to attack, one of his comrades is impaled by a spear. Suddenly, another hunter named Zed shows up and boasts about his aim, thinking he has killed the boar. After realizing that he hasn't, Zed apologizes but faintly whispers that the hunter had blocked his shot. Marlak hears his snarky remarks, and so the hunters grab Zed and bully him. They then return to their village, where we see a guy named O picking strawberries. As Marlak walks past him, he belittles O by tossing away his fruit basket. It turns out that O and Zed have been good friends ever since they were born. As they chat, Zed spots his crush Maya and starts to flirt with her. However, she politely rejects him, saying that she wants a man who can protect and provide for her. To make matters worse, Marlak offers Maya a boar's head as a token of love and makes romantic advancements towards her. Meanwhile, O is also attracted to Zed's sister, Ima, but he is too shy to go and talk with her. Just then, one of the villagers takes a dump behind Zed's sleeping quarters, making him furious. So, he and O decide to take a stroll into the woods, where Zed goes on a rant about how he has always looked down upon and treated like garbage. They then reach a tree bearing some glowing fruits. It turns out, eating this fruit is forbidden, and no one has even dared to come close to it. However, Zed insists on eating it, as he contemplates as to why it is actually forbidden anyway. O tries his best to stop him, but Zed, who believes that he will become intelligent and maybe get a chance with Maya, bites it anyway. Immediately, Zed claims that he has gained superior knowledge, but he fails to answer even the most basic of questions regarding science. At the same time, a giant snake wraps around O's feet, making him panic. He frantically asks what they should do, but Zed's replies are futile, and so he eats more of the forbidden fruit. Later that night, the villagers have a dance festival. O tries to impress Ima and does the awkward fertility dance with her. She also gets up and dances with O, but for some reason, he hits her in the head with a stick, thinking that she will like it. Unfortunately, she angrily hits him back before storming away from there. Meanwhile, it turns out that someone from the village had spotted Zed eating the forbidden fruit, and so he rats him out. An angry Marlak confronts him about this, and as a result, Zed is banished from the village. However, things worsen for Zed, as he accidentally burns down the village with the fire stick in his hand, prompting the hunters to chase him down. He runs for his life, and shortly after, Marlak finds him hiding below the bushes. Zed is inches away from being killed, when all of a sudden, O comes to his rescue and hits Marlak on the head, knocking him out. Following this, the two make a run for it as the whole village descends into chaos. O believes that the world is flat, and once they reach the mountains, they will fall off. But Z Zed thinks otherwise. The next day, O's beliefs are proven wrong, as they discover land beyond the mountains. He then assumes that Zed knew this beforehand since he ate the forbidden fruit. After a bit of walking, they come across a herd of cows grazing in a field, and Zed decides to kill one of them for food. He lunges towards the cow, but is immediately kicked off. Shortly after, two brothers, Cain and Abel, show up and reveal that they are farmers and that the cows are theirs. As they explain their work, they have a disagreement, which results in a brutal fight. In the end, Cain ends up killing Abel with a stone. As O and Zed are witnesses to this crime, he invites them over to his house for supper. Fearing that Cain will murder them too if they don't oblige, they reluctantly agree to go. The same evening, Zed and O have dinner with Cain's family. The eldest member, Adam, inquires about Abel's whereabouts and the trio lies that they haven't seen him all day. Later, Adam instructs Zed to sleep with a beautiful girl, while O is forced to spend the night with a filthy guy. Zed is ecstatic, thinking that he will finally get laid. But, to his misfortune, the girl is only interested in other girls. Meanwhile, O has difficulty sleeping as the filthy guy repeatedly farts and creates a nuisance. The next morning, Adam and some farmers go out to the fields in search of his lost son. They eventually find Abel's corpse and deduce that Cain is the culprit. However, by this time, the trio has already escaped the village. Currently, they are at a market, where they surprisingly spot Marlac, Maya and Ima in a tied-up state. Zed and O slowly approach the girls and learn that after they burnt down the village, other attackers invaded the place and kidnapped all of the villagers to be sold as slaves. Determined to free them, Zed tries to buy the girls but is unable to do so due to lack of cash. Kane then intervenes and claims that he can help release all of them, but in the end, he simply betrays his friends by selling them as slaves in exchange for a horse. Later, Zed, O, Maya, Ima, and the other slaves are locked in a cage, ready to be delivered to someone. But along the way, a third-party tribe suddenly arrives on horses and ambushes the slave masters. During the attack, Zed and O break free and luckily escape while Maya and Ima are captured. The two try to save the girls and spy on the attackers from afar, but they fall asleep soon after. When they wake up, they find that the attackers are gone, much to their dismay. Afterwards, Zed and O make their way to a city called Sodom, as they had overheard the attackers talking about the place earlier. The movie then cuts to a man named Abraham, about to sacrifice his son Isaac due to orders from God. All of a sudden, he is interrupted by Zed and O, who happen to be passing by. To prevent Abraham from killing the boy, they claim that God 
God has sent them to stop him. Hearing this, Abraham drops his knife and thanks God before escorting them to his village, thinking that they are the holy messengers. However, to prove their loyalty, Abraham states that both of them will need to circumcise their genital parts. Afraid, the two run away from the village and make their way to the infamous city of Sodom, but they soon find out that Abraham's son Isaac has been following them. He accompanies the two into the city, saying that he and his friends always sneak into Sodom to have fun. They soon make it to the gates, when suddenly several guards attempt to catch them. So, Isaac runs away, while the two are captured and readied for punishment. But, fortunately, Cain, who happens to be working as a guard there, vouches for them and saves their lives. In the next scene, the trio takes a walk through the city, while Cain explains the perks of being a guard inside the palace. So, the next day, Zed and O also get enlisted as guards, despite having no skills whatsoever. After that, the three of them explore the market, when suddenly, the city's princess, Inyana, passes by in her carriage. Zed is immediately attracted to her, but Cain reminds him that he has no chance with the princess, as she is royalty. They then head to the palace, where they find out that a virgin woman is being sacrificed. This is because the people believe that a sacrifice can please God, and in return, they will be showered with rain, food, and shelter. After the woman is thrown into a pit of fire, one of the slaves approaches the three and reveals that Princess Inyana has summoned Zed and O. O is taken someplace else by an old male, while the slave escorts Zed into the palace. He then finds himself in an intimate gathering, and it's revealed that the slave who led him inside is actually Maya. After a while, Zed spots O covered in gold paint, posing as a statue. The two then see Ima in the crowd, who also turns out to be a slave. Currently, she is being harassed by one of the guards, so Zed pretends to scold her and sends her off. Following this, he goes to visit the princess, while the high priest shows O the holy room and explains that whosoever has entered has never returned alive. However, it is rumored that only the special ones will be unharmed, as God favors the righteous ones. Meanwhile, Zed claims that he himself is the chosen one, and so the princess takes him to the holy room. She manages to convince him to go inside and speak to God to end all of the people's suffering. When Zed enters the room, nothing happens, and he instead finds O hiding from the high priest, as the latter was forcing him to do inappropriate things. Zed then kneels down before the big stone in the middle of the room and prays to God. However, after his prayers, he gets into an argument with O about God's existence. They eventually make up, and as they leave the room together, they are met with the high priest and numerous guards, who put them into jail, as entering the room is against the rules. The following day, the two are taken outside, where they are sentenced to be stoned to death in front of the public. But, before the procedure can begin, Zed confronts the king and claims that he is the chosen one, as he is unscathed even after entering the holy room. As a result, the entire crowd starts chanting for Zed. The king also believes in the theory, and so, he dismisses their death sentence, but instead of freeing them, he decides to keep them as slaves. Later in the afternoon, another virgin woman is to be sacrificed to God. Surprisingly, the king chooses his own daughter, Princess Inyana, as he is fed up with her constant grouching. It turns out that Ima and Maya are also next in line to be sacrificed, and when Zed finds out about this, he makes a dramatic entry and destroys a construction site in the process. At the same time, Abraham, Isaac, and their troops reveal themselves, and a full-scale riot begins. The public also starts to retaliate while some of the guards betray the king, killing him and taking his crown. Meanwhile, O rescues Ima, and he finally confesses his feelings for her, which leads to the two having intercourse amidst the chaos. Zed fights through many guards and eventually saves Maya from the high priest, who falls into the pit of fire. After a while, the fighting stops, and the crowd all cheers for Zed, as they think that he is the chosen one. It also starts raining, making them even more excited. However, he finally comes clean, and tells everyone that he is just a normal man, trying to save his friends. He further mentions that anyone can be chosen, and can make their own destiny, if they persevere through the tough times. Hearing his inspirational speech, the crowd is sent into a state of frenzy. In the final scene, Princess Inyana becomes the Queen of Sodom, while Zed and O prepare to go on different paths. O intends on returning back to his village to help rebuild and develop it, while Zed wants to travel the world with Maya. The movie ends with the two having an emotional but awkward goodbye before leaving the city.